you like to repeat that? <laughs> and that oop. Lynn, do you have any fun facts? Nope. Yes, you do. Nope. Yes, you do. Nope. Luna, tell us about Thanksgiving with the Garcias and the Jello. That would make me eat food I did not want. Not want. And what? food one time at one thanksgiving i was like really sick because i didn't like any of the food and it was making me like almost throw up so then because i was sitting with julie she goes you don't look good i thought i feel sick so she said just give me half of your food so she ate half of my food this is when i was like eight years old maybe food. so then i didn't get in trouble for not eating all of my food mm. actually i do have a fun fact yes Venaki. The longest animal in the world is called a siphonophore. A siphonicore? A siphonophore. What does it look like? Basically one big creature with a ton of little smaller creatures attached to it. <clears throat> it kind of looks like a string of lights. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's basically what it is. We watched it on the Octonauts last night. Yeah. Mm. Um, it's like a really long string. It's a, How long is it? Over 100 feet? It's yeah, longer than a blue feet. whale. And it, what is it? Remember the three things that it does to attract um, prey? Lights. Or to attract. Lights to attract them. Lights to attract its food. And then hooks to grab them and then uh, like stingers to sting them. Do you know how to spell it? I can't remember. Oh. <laughs> Thank you for that. Fat, fun fact. Fascinating information. Ladies and gentlemen, our next guest needs no introduction. She's eating refried beans. No. Liar. And gets mad at Lennox. <laughs> when did I ever say I wanted to be on the platform? Do not tip your stool. <laughs> he looks so unhappy. <laughs> Luna said tomorrow for Thanksgiving, we won't pick him up. And then he'll be thankful for that. <laughs> Dear. Luna's on the pod complaining about Julia. Or no, I'm not no. thanking Julia. Right, right. She's Avowing. Saying, uh, complaining about having to eat everything she was given for Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Both of these children here have always hated traditional Thanksgiving food. Really? I think you guys will eat a roll, like a bread roll. Yeah? Yeah. But other than that, they will, oh, wow. not, they will not eat anything. Really? Well, I mean, I can't eat anything else. There's mashed potatoes. I'll there's eat mashed potatoes and gravy. Green bean casserole. You can, you choose not to because you're a pescatarian. But you've only been a pescatarian for a couple of years. I just don't like, that's also another reason why I gave up being, like, not, <laughs> that's why I chose to be a pescatarian. Because I don't like, I don't like turkey. Less peer pressure at the Garcia's. Yeah. This Thanksgiving dinner is so gross you had to become a pescatarian. Yes. <laughs> wow. I don't, it, it's my least favorite holiday. That's a confession. Yeah, both the kids hate Thanksgiving because they hate the food. And they feel like, hmm. do you guys feel pressured to eat it? Yeah. Well, you just told that story. Yeah, because like, everyone's like, oh, you like the food? Oh, I need this. Can you try it out? I'm I like, love Thanksgiving food. There, I don't like Thanksgiving There's food. hits and misses. Yeah. And that uh, oop. <laughs> is, the, is the laundry door, laundry room door closed, Lynn? Yeah. Okay. And that uh, oop. Greetings, internet. Welcome to But I'm Still a Good Person by Vince Nicholas. I'm Vince Nicholas. I'm joined by my sparkling wifey, Carolyn Nicholas. Hello. Hello, honey. Thank you for joining me at our dining room table for this little program here. Okay. So, we have two things going on. We are going to drink, taste, uh, Bud Light hard seltzer. They came out with an ugly sweater pack, holiday themed. Uh, re please read the flavors there, sweetie pie. We've got four different kinds. We yeah. have seltzer nog. A uh, play on eggnog. Do you like eggnog? No. Me neither. <laughs> it's disgusting, right? <laughs> yes. Like we have a we have a, a can a, a canister of egg whites. Ew. 
Ooh. in the fridge. Well, it's, more, it's basically the same thing yeah, yeah, as yeah. eggnog. It's like egg eggnog mixed with, with cinnamon. cream yeah. and a bit of cinnamon. Disgusting. Cinnamon. We have sugar plum. Okay, that's fun. Cherry cordial. Okay, like I'm being cordial. I'm not being uh, uncordial. <laughs> what's, the syn- cordial, cordial. what's the synonym of cordial? Yes. Go ahead. Cordial is like a, a a syrup, like a sweet syrup. Oh. And I think it's mostly, you'll find it like in England. Yeah. I know when I worked at the pub in London, yes. we had a few different flavors of cordial. Oh. And we, we would mix them with different things to make a drink. Oh. And also in um, Mary Poppins, remember mm. she gives the kids like cough syrup? Yes. And the little boy's like, lime cordial. Yes. When he takes his little medicine. Yes, top in a bag. Top in a bag. <laughs> I actually don't remember that, but I'm going to keep going. Um, well, I see when I see cordial, I think warm, friendly, yeah, formal. Yeah. It has a couple different meanings, apparently. Yeah. But I, I didn't know cordial had a food uh, fa- uh, facet of it. Yes. Cherry cordial. Cordial. Hey, hey I'm being cordial. <laughs> I'm not being unfriendly. I'm being. <laughs> Affable and amiable. Our fourth and final flavor is cranberry, which yeah. is pretty basic. Yeah, they have cranberry in the normal uh, hard seltzer they do. flavor. Uh, let's start with the cranberry just to get out of oh. the way. Cause, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, you, you want to you want to save the, the the best for last. <laughs> yes, I think the cherry cordial <clears throat> and the the cranberry are the most common. Yeah. So let's do those two first. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Ready. Ooh, good sound effect. <laughs> this is cranberry. I'll go first with the cranberry if you don't mind. Okay, please. <laughs> it tastes like a bubbly cranberry juice. Sure. It tastes like a bubbly cranberry juice. We've had some sparkling water this week. I've had the bubbly brand, uh... It's horrible. And I had the Jelly Belly brand. Oh, that's Jelly right. Belly from Fairfield, California, about 45 minutes away. I saw it in the Dollar Tree, and it was actually cherry flavor. And I was like, this has to be out of this world. Because I love Jelly Bellies. I've always yeah. loved Jelly Bellies. I love, I love fruit uh, gummy things. A cherry Jelly Belly is really yummy. Yeah. So put that in the liquid form. Yeah. I'm here for it. I know. And so I saw the Jelly Belly brand. And yeah, it was at the Dollar Tree. Okay, uh, buyer beware. <laughs> That's Ca- your first sign Ca- that something might be off. Caveat emptor. Is that the phrase? Uh, but I was like, and you you were paying. I didn't have my wallet. Well, shoot. So I said, uh, I'm going to buy this or please buy this for me. Or you're going to buy this for me, woman. Please, uh, madam, may I have this drink? Yeah. And we, we were at the Dollar Tree and uh, you bought it for me. And I was like, this is because I, Jelly Belly, like when, especially the juicy pear. It's so flipping good. Like, how do they pack this much, quote unquote, real flavor into a jelly bean? Yeah. But they do. And we went to the factory a few years ago. We did a tour. And, uh, like, I've always considered Jelly Belly just a different level of candy. It's it's really good. And so when I saw their label, their brand on this sparkling water at the Dollar Tree, I was like, oh, this is going to be... I'm in for a treat. And then... Uh, uh, I made you buy it for me. I mean, you bought it for me because I asked politely. Uh, and I drank it, and it was horrible. <laughs> it was really awful. And yeah. I think Luna had some of it. Yeah. And she said, this is terrible. Yeah. We were all disappointed. Yeah. Luna's, Big letdown. Luna said, uh, this is why I don't like sparkling water. And I said, well, the, the stuff I buy, we buy American Ice, I want to say. And, well, the the brand that everyone knows, that's the Walmart brand, but there's Sparkling Ice out there. Right. Um, that, that I find very pleasant. Uh, I, I enjoy drinking it. It's, it's a bit on the pricey side compared to the Walmart brand. Um, Clear American, I think their brand is. But, um, yeah, when I saw Jelly Belly. I was like, this is going to be good. Drank it. It was horrifying. <laughs> and, like, well, what the heck, Jelly Belly? Like... From Fairfield, California, uh, they're they're just pimping out their their brand. I mean, add some more stevia. I don't know. Yeah. It was not sweet. Yeah. No sweetness whatsoever. Yeah. It was horrible. Yeah, it really put a foul taste in my mouth, and it made me think of uh, 
when we went to Jelly Belly, how, Lennox got into the Harry Potter Jelly Belly flavors. Oh, yeah. And they were yes. like disgusting on purpose. <laughs> right. And then Lennox Albert ate some and he, he wanted to vomit. <laughs> and so from then on, whenever Jelly Beans or Jelly Belly or Harry Potter's brought up. When we bring up, when we start as a family, when we start reading J.K. Rowling's tweets about the trans community, Lennox wants to vomit. Is that what happens? We all do. Yeah. Uh, okay. So that was uh, cranberry. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, what? <laughs> Cherry cordial. <laughs> I'm being cold. I don't know why. Oh, because we were just watching the Only Ways Essex clips of <gasps> Luna Marie on your telephone. Toey. Cordial. Our daughter Luna is grateful for Toey. Yes. Okay. Cool. Cherry cordial. Here we go. Yes. Cordial, aka. This is what I oh. imagine. Oh. 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 Sniff it. Does it hints <laughs> hints of rosewood? Um. That has layers to it. Oh yeah. Let me see. Okay, here you go. That ain't. Ju- that's not just. I was expecting just a straight cherry. Yeah. That's like a cherry frosting. I'm okay. getting like hints of. Sh- I'm, I'm getting like layers of like sugar. Yeah. That tastes like a. Uh, Are you a sommelier? That tastes like the Great British Bake Off made a sparkling cider. <laughs> okay. Drink and do you do you taste it? There there are layers, but I wouldn't say any of them are. Pleasant. <laughs> I, I'm tasting frosting. Mm. I'm tasting sugar. Okay. It's it, it's kind of got a warmth to it. Let me <laughs> let me take one more sip. Yeah. Okay. Wow. I can see the warmth. Yes. But I would I I don't enjoy it. It and was su- it was shocking. I is it cordial? <laughs> What is cordial again? I mean, I was, I'm was i here and I'm, I'm listening, like but that was 10 minutes ago. It's like ago. a sugary syrup and they have different flavors. Okay. And they put Lime, it on. cherry. Like, you would like mix it with soda water and vodka and make like uh, some sort of mixed drink. Oh, okay. Okay. And it was called cordial? Or yeah. It was called cherry cordial? Well, they, cherry is a type of cordial, but gotcha. they had, they have lime, they have cherry, they have um, gotcha. some other like boysenberry or something. Okay. On. And we're at the bar, so you would have, yeah. psh, you would be like, oh, excuse me, sorry, <laughs> oh Liz Fisher. Actually, Liz Fisher, who calls me the answer to her dreams. Prayers. Prayers. The answer to her <laughs> prayers and dreams. Hopes She's, and dreams and prayers. Thoughts and prayers. Liz Fisher says she likes it when I burp. <laughs> Why? Well... Uh, don't forget to apologize after. I think that's key. Right. Otherwise, you're just a barbarian. In a Canadian accent, because Justin Bieber, who probably burps around Haley Bieber, and he's Canadian. He's so. probably disgusting around Haley Bieber. Yeah, well, all those tattoos, honey. Ugh. But he, he burps, and then he says, I'm sorry. So <laughs> I'm sorry, Liz Fisher. Am I still the answer to your prayers? And she, Liz Fisher, your, who is your mom, she also, uh, when we hug, goodbye or hello, or it's usually a, on the goodbye hug, but she, she says in, into my, uh, she was, she whispers into my ear. <laughs> she, she says it, she speaks into my ears. Thank you for everything you do. And I'm, Listen, Liz Fisher, I'm just out here. I'm out here. <laughs> Trying to make your daughter happy and your grand grandkids. Trying to provide for your grandkids. Anyways, cordial, honey. <laughs> uh, many layers. I thought it was very. It, it, there's another layer. It's odd. Yeah. It's that. I mean, it's not good. It was very surprising. Right. I don't want to drink four of those. Would you rather have the cranberry or the cordial? The cranberry. Cherry? Hmm. I would agree. What's next, darling? Next up, we've got sugar plum. Oh, is this even a flavor? Or is this one of the (laughs) presents on the 12 days of Christmas or whatever? I'm nervous for this one. I cannot wait, dude. What is a sugar? Uh, I know what a plum is. (laughs) We know what a sugar is. We know what a plum is. Uh, What is a sugar plum? Just a made-up machination of Hollywood 
like R and B singers talking about going all night. <laughs> That's very interesting. Mm. It's almost nutty. Mm. <laughs> I like it. I, I like do, it better than the other two. I do like it. Yeah. What is that? What is that? I get hints of nut. I don't know. It's very earthy. Yeah. <laughs> to me, they all taste super similar. <laughs> They're all terrible. <laughs> right. Well, that's the other uh, point. All right. Uh, uh, sure, there is an earthy flavor. <laughs> Without further ado, let's just move on to the final terrible drink. Yes. Eggnog. Seltzer nog. Yes. Seltzer nog. Here we go. We are here. This is, this is either going to be fantastic or the worst thing I've ever had. Yeah. But very similar to the other three. <laughs> That's the thing we found about hard seltzers. Yeah. They're all pretty similar. Although the iced tea ones, we do not like. We can't even stand to purchase yeah. those ever again. Yeah. They're so bad. And then the Bang Mix, I like, oh. but it's so sweet and so artificial and chemically, you don't like it. I hate it. Like yeah. It makes me nauseous. I yeah. can't. Okay. Here we Tru- go. Truly Fruit Punch, I think, is good. All the um, basic ones, like Truly, um, White Claw. Yeah. The really basic ones, are they're all the same and they're all fine. Yeah. Okay. Not- I think the appeal is the can and just the fact that you're drinking it. Um. That's not bad. It's kind of marshmallowy. Hmm. What? Oh yeah. That's not very eggnoggy. No. <laughs> Although I haven't had eggnog in like forty years. <laughs> I I had it a few years ago. Mm. Um, was it spiked or did it have alcohol no, in it, or no, it was no, just no. egg? It was just straight eggnog from a carton. Hmm. Nasty. Um. That's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. It's uh, sort of sugar plummy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the cordial and cranberry can get. I mean. Is that our review? That's our review. What else? There's nothing else to say. The review. Well, I, I wanted to talk about how early in our love affair, honey, uh, we drank a lot of beer. And then for whatever reason, we switched to the hard seltzer. Well, your white claws, your trulies, yes. I think when we first started dating for nearly four years ago, yes, these um, hard seltzers didn't exist. Didn't exist. Right. They've really blown up in the last few years. Right. So when we first started dating, we would drink m- beer and specifically Michelob Ultra. Yeah, low carb, low calorie. Low carb, low calorie. Yeah. And then after a year or two, these they like they started coming out with all like truly white claw. They started coming out with all these different varieties so we switched to that yeah because you and i both really care about low carb low calorie low sugar yes <laughs> so sorry liz fisher <laughs> that's what sorry happens. liz fisher slash Haley bieber <laughs> uh but recently we we switched back to beer because um i just we i we we just like the buzz better or the feeling or the the um the hard seltzer, it just gave us, uh, like, a, a vibe that didn't, it didn't coalesce with us chilling at home, which is what we do right. majority of the time. The beer vibe is more, like, chill. Yeah, it's mellow. It is. Yeah. For whatever reason, I'm not sure, but yeah. we've gone back to the beer, yeah. and I think we're both happy with that. Yeah. And for a while, like, drinking the beer, I was like... Uh, I, I'm I'm chasing the high of the hard seltzer, or this is different. And I was like, I, I want. I it didn't make sense in my head, but uh, now it does. Like we're chilling, and the kids are here. Our Christmas lights are on, um, and we we're just listening to Christmas music. And I think beer goes with our. Our vibe, our what, what we what we have going on here. It's more of our aesthetic. Yes, I think for you also. Yes, drinking beer from a glass can, a bottle, a glass bottle. <laughs> it's yes. it's a, glass can. <laughs> yes, <clears throat> beer from a glass bottle is a step above an aluminum can. Yeah, in sense of class. Yeah, maturity. Mature. 
uh, aesthetic yes. vibe. Yes. So we're back on the glass bottle. Yeah. The thin cans uh, I associate with uh, like sorority girls or whatever. <laughs> the, the girls we see at the pool in the summertime. Yes. Here at our condos. Can be brown. <laughs> uh, but with bottles, well, you just need to be more careful, I guess. Uh, you feel more it, like an adult, maybe. Right. And it's it's heavy. It's it's something to carry. It's not just lightweight. It, it's a whole like mindset or something. It's uh, physically heavy, and yeah. mentally heavy. Yeah, man. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, I, I dig, I dig, I dig beer. And, I uh, like beer. I really like beer. Yeah. I like a cold, refreshing beer on a summer hot day. Yeah. Um, I know it's gr- uh, well, it's gross to a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Dark beer is disgusting to me, but we drink yeah. really light beer, <clears throat> yeah. and I really like it. Yeah, I crave it occasionally. Yeah, I think that's also why I was like, "Yeah, I'm on board to go back to the beer." Yeah, when you suggested that we did that. Yeah, and it's cheaper. <laughs> that's the other <laughs> I'm thing. I'm surprised it's cheaper, but yeah, it is. Yeah, we can get a 24 pack for 18, 19 bucks at Walmart, and a 24 pack of uh, any hard seltzers. The lowest price is twenty five bucks, mm. uh, going into thirty, um, and uh, and and the buzz is different. Uh, it is like we we tried White Claw Surge because it's eight percent alcohol. Yeah, and uh, and it, it, I I didn't like it. And I didn't I, like it either. I told our my coworker Keith, not his real name. <laughs> Uh, who That's is an avowed? Who is an avowed <laughs> alcoholic? Well, it starts with K. Uh, but I told <laughs> Keith, I was like, I said, who who is a drunk and drinks six to seven nights a week? Uh, and I said, hey, have you had that white cloth surge? And he said, no. And I said, oh, it's white cloth, but with eight percent volume. And he said. Oh, hell no. Oh, wow. And that's coming from an alcoholic. <laughs> okay. Keith. Lovable Keith. Who I, I, <laughs> darling Keith. Um. Uh, but, yeah. And for the... I, I have zero knowledge about the brewing process, but for whatever whatever it is, hard seltzer, it just doesn't vibe with us. Maybe yeah. if you're a sorority girl, it does. But uh, sipping on a beer, a cold beer, uh, and... Uh, hard seltzer. To be frank, it's led to some uh, some uh, non harmonious moments between you and I, darling. Uh, and so I, I do not like that. <laughs> I'm not. I don't want to manifest that. So we went back to the beer, and we're happy as clams. Is that right? That's right. Okay. Uh, so so, what is today? Today is the day before Thanksgiving. It's Thanksgiving Eve. Yes. And we are going to Uncle Brent's tomorrow. Your brother, Brent. We're going to his house in Roseville at 3 p.m. And what's on the the food agenda, honey? Let's let's get ready. I know that there will be turkey and ham. Yes. I know my mother is making her famous grandma's buns. Yeah. Rolls. They're bread. They're bread rolls. They're delicious. Yeah. I... I'm certain that somebody will be bringing mashed potatoes. Certain. And then we are bringing a green bean casserole and a couple of pies. I also just picked up some brownies because they looked good. Yeah. And other than that, I'm not sure what else will be there food wise. Now, initially, you were on the, you wanted to bring frozen pies. I did because I Or you wanted to get frozen pies and then, but just the logistics of... Should we bake them here? Right. If we bring them to Brent's, then does he have yeah. an oven or two free? I don't want to take up their oven space. Right. But if I bake them here, they're, are they going to be cold? Yeah. So I just bought pre-made pies. Room temperature? And they look really good. But I think we can heat them up at their house if necessary. And that ah. will be a much shorter process than baking a frozen pie. Ah. What kind of pie? What, what pies did you get? Okay. I went to Nugget. Yes. No pumpkin. <laughs> what? No pumpkin. Wow. They had. I wonder um, if they were sold out or. I don't think so. Because hmm. it it was a new. Pumpkins dis- getting I, canceled. I go to Nugget a lot. I work like a few blocks away from a Nugget, so yeah. I walk there a lot. I don't buy stuff every time I go there. I just like to wander around, and yeah. it's it's a destination to walk to yeah. to get. You some like steps to in. walk to the cheese display. <laughs> I and love think, the cheese display. Think, and look at it, look at it and be like, 
I want all this cheese. <laughs> right? And I never buy it. Um, <laughs> so I went well, to the we nugget. have uh, some goat cheese with I bacon. Finally, I finally bought the little goat cheese pearls. That we learned from Amanda Wilkins. Yeah. Did she have them in her car? She had them. And I was like, I'm hungry. I yeah. happened to mention I'm hungry. Yeah. So our realtor, a couple of years ago when we were house hunting. Yes. She's like, oh, I have these goat cheese pearls yeah. from Nugget. Yeah. And she gave them to me. And you love them. they're delicious. Yeah. And I Nugget has not had them. Well, Nugget in West Sacramento doesn't have them. I go to the Nugget that she went to out in Greenhaven because that's where we were house hunting at the time. Right. So and they don't have she, them either? No, but they, they uh, just finally okay. got them. So gotcha. I picked up some because gotcha. I was like, hey, I haven't seen these in a couple of years. Yeah. Anyway. Where you been? <laughs> goat cheese. <laughs> anyway, I go to Nugget a lot. Yes. On my breaks at work, I walk up there just for fun. Yeah. So this pie display I saw was very new. It was in the front entry area. Mm-hmm. And tons, tons of pies mm-hmm. everywhere. Okay. No pumpkin. Hmm. They had apple, cranberry, yeah. peach. Hmm. And pecan. Okay. And I got one apple and I got one peach. Yeah. And then I got a beautiful box of brownies with like powder sugar on top. Okay. My first question is with the brownies, does it have the crunchy crust? Because that is key. That is golden. It's hard to tell because there's powdered sugar dusted on top. (sighs) So I can't quite tell. And then uh, the peach... Are you a fan of peach? I love peach. And I think it's my mom's favorite pie also. Hmm. That's Gra- Grandpa Curtis's. Right, right, right We right. bought that for him. I know you don't like it. Well, it, are, are they peaches from the Del Monte <laughs> I gave my peaches down in Georgia. Yeah, yeah that's, that's it. it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Where are the peaches from? Are they fresh peaches? I do Little syrup? Or are they from the Del Monte can of uh, canned fruit? Which is uh, disgusting. Who knows? And then the apple classic. Yeah. And they that. had they had two types of apple. Uh-huh. One with like a flat, ugly crust and one with a beautiful crust. Like Dutch? They had two different names. Lattice? I, I got the one with... No, it's... Neither were lattice. Crumb? Neither were crumb. Uh. But I got the one with the, the name, whatever. It had a really pretty topping. That's okay. the one I got. Good, good. Thank you. Okay. So <laughs> we, we got two pies and some brownies. A tray of brownies. Okay. And I'm going to make a green bean casserole. Okay. And I'm going to double the serving size if it's feasible. Of the green bean casserole. Right. But will you double the cheese? No. You're going to keep the cheese. No. I'm going to I'm gonna do very minimal cheese because you told me it was way over the top. And I agree with it's, you. It's I, I, went, I went crazy last time. Yeah. So, little cheese. <laughs> yeah. The rest, it's going to be great. You're going to love it. I look forward to it. Although, I... <laughs> well, so you, you're going to double everything but the cheese. <laughs> well, the cheese isn't even part of it. Right. That's it, my own little adding. Right. In. But do you know how much you put in it last year? Or Too how much. You used to, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it, n- numerically, honey, yeah, you I, can't just say... Honey, honey. Uh, I'm putting in five cups, 2.5 cups. Don't worry about it. Okay. I'm going to do a light sprinkling and it's going to be lovely. Okay. Thank you. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Okay. So I have this listicle uh, from the internet. Uh, This is from the website lifehacker.com. Have you ever been there, honey? No. They used to be very helpful. Like, how do I get my Android phone to play music or stuff like that? So they used to be Google? (laughs) Well, Google steals their content and places it on google so you don't have to go to lifehacker.com mm-hmm. but uh they they still are a very helpful website but they also got into the clickbait nonsense uh of of this nine feuds as luna marie would pronounce it that should be banned from the thanksgiving dinner table oh uh so not is anything banned tomorrow not as far as I know. Okay. Nothing's been canceled. <laughs> did did uh, canned cranberry sauce send anti-Semitic tweets in 2015, honey? I was listening to a comedian on Corolla, Adam Corolla, and he talked about uh, when he got on Saturday Night Live, hired him 
they're like, you're hired. You're going to be on our season, whatever, 48, whatever the current or recent. Uh, but he said they have interns and they have a staff and they have people who go through every tweet, every Instagram, every podcast looking for things that could quote unquote be offensive. And turns out they found out uh, he's on a podcast and he said some anti-Asian things or he was joking and uh, in a non-joking forum, it could be considered anti-Asian. Uh, and he had a couple controversial tweets from whenever. Uh, so before he even got on, before even the se- like he got hired, they're ramping up production. And before even the season started, they were like, uh, we can't have you. I remember you that. Go. That was like a year ago and he was yeah. a white guy. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, this is a tough issue. Um, there's a very fine line between being offensive and being humorous. Yeah. And I think I think humor, like comedy and humor in general, it's not it's not eternal. Right. Like things that were funny a hundred years ago obviously aren't funny today, but sometimes that they are. So humor and comedy, it's always changing. Um, and what is offensive and not offensive, that's always changing. So. Uh, there's a fine line there and i i don't fall like solidly on one side or the other of this argument and that oop i'm sorry i'm looking for his name honey okay and that oop and that oop shane gillis is the man's name um and this provoked me to look into his content even more like What's he done that's so terrible and horrible and so controversial? And honestly, he's not my cup of tea. I watched some stand-up, about 15, 20 minutes of him, and I was like, eh, he's okay, I guess. Um, but uh, why are we talking about that? I forget. And that uh, oop. Feuds. Canceling foods. <laughs> what foods are canceled? And then we're talking about cancel culture. Oh, my God. <laughs> Nine feuds that should be banned from the Thanksgiving dinner table. Okay. Uh, number nine, and th- this can be Christmas. Well, I was thinking today, what Thanksgiving dinner versus Christmas? Thanksgiving it gets all the fanfare, fanfare. <laughs> Christmas, be- is it because you wake up, you have some, you you open presents at whatever seven a.m., and then it's kind of like, well, here's some breakfast, and it's not, uh, it's not yeah. such a formal meal. Thanksgiving has more of a traditional structure for what you're eating. Yeah. Thanksgiving, or I'm sorry, I said that backwards. Thanksgiving has more of a traditional food menu. Yeah. Christmas is a little bit more open. Free for all. A little bit more of a free for all. Although um, a lot of families do have their own traditions. Yeah. And my family is completely different than a lot of other families' traditions. So I have no... My family always, since my childhood, has done a Christmas breakfast. Uh, Right. Right, which we hosted at uh, our previous residence, yes. So this has happened since I was little. It's continued through this very year. Yeah. So we do breakfast, and there we do quiche and um, like morning breakfast casseroles and breakfast breads. Is that happening this year? Bacon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, where? At my mom's house, my mom and dad's house. Ah, I thought we were going to host it. We hosted it last year (laughs) in a small. (laughs) Two years. uh, That was two years ago. Okay, two years ago in a small yeah. uh, apartment. <laughs> my parents are going to do it this year. Um, so my I'm going to host it here. <laughs> my breakfast tradition is breakfast foods. Yes, but I know other families do have like the uh, ham or turkey yeah. or like more of a dinner meal. Yeah, it's but- well, I think it's the time because uh, Thanksgiving there's football for the red-blooded heterosexual American men. Like me, honey. But there's football all day, and but there, there's a formal and turkey. Turkey is off is synonymous with Thanksgiving, uh, but with Christmas, it, it's not the, the turkey and Christmas don't go together. Is it more of a ham? On I don't, I Christmas? honestly don't know because, yeah. like I said, my only tradition is the breakfast foods. Yeah. Well, for for the past 10, 15 years, however long I've been 
in Sacramento. Um, I, I will generally go down to my parents in San Diego uh, for Thanksgiving, where they do the thanks, they do the turkey, and they do the ham because of me, because because Grandma Tina loves me. Uh, but Christmas, uh, I, I don't. Well, I've spent it by myself a lot of times, honey. Uh, but I don't really associate anything, even though it can be a grand uh, dinner. Um, but maybe it's more like a grazing thing all day, and it's not so formal and set in stone. Um, but yeah, th- this is for Thanksgiving dinner, but I guess you could apply it to a holiday, uh, Christmas dinner also. Uh, but nine foods that should be banned from the Thanksgiving dinner table. Banned. Canceled. I got to tell you, I'm here. I'm on the defensive. Yes. Because I love Thanksgiving food. So I'm ready to strike down whatever Absolutely. you tell me. It's good. Some of it's good, but some of it ain't so good. For instance, number nine, canned cranberry sauce. <laughs> Ugh. Well, it's not it's great. Disgusting. I'll eat it. Have you ever had like homemade cranberry <clears throat> sauce? No. Not from a can? No. That's quite good. And what... Well, visually like when it comes out of the can it has like the little ridges <laughs> just of like a can of, <laughs> of, of refried beans when right. you pour them. yeah exactly which you just made for luna marie earlier tonight and they look just like that but well, well what's the difference taste wise between a uh, canned cranberry well, and homemade is it similar um, yeah it's it's tart just, it's, tart. it's the consistency and texture that's different yeah. because the canned stuff's like a jelly yeah and the um Real homemade stuff I had, like, had chunks, like, big chunks of cranberry. Hmm. And it was more like... Are those, like, a fruit? Like a cherry? Yeah, they're a fruit. Okay, because I just think of the ocean spray commercials where the guys are in the water with cranberries floating yeah, everywhere and they're, they're wearing overalls. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> That's all I can think about. Oh, okay. I don't love cranberry, but you know what? Put it in front of me and I'll eat it. Hmm. Okay. But, well... What what if it's canned? Would, I'll eat it. You'll have a slice. I will. All righty, you're you're out here, honey. That's savage. Uh, that was number nine. Number eight, sweet potato casserole with marshmallows. I think I've had this once or twice. Mm-hmm. I remember one year, a, a long time ago, my brother Cameron made this. Why? <laughs> Cameron? And that, that's what he brought. Okay. And he himself made it, and it yeah. was uh, it was like mushy sweet potatoes with the Marshmallows, marshmallows on top yeah and that i'd never had it before and it right. was really yummy yeah i really liked it yeah but we rarely eat this this yeah. isn't this isn't something i have had hardly ever in my life but it's yeah. fine no need to cancel it should it be banned or canceled <laughs> neither um, i've had uh i i haven't had this because we looked at the picture and i was like i don't think i've had that but i've had candied yams uh, which I remember distinctly because uh, my coworker at Pacific Bell, Drusella Hawkins, was having a housewarming or an apartment. Okay, whatever. Uh, but Drusella, I don't know if she was from, but her family is from the South. And so she had candy DMs. Someone made candy. She made, I can't, I can't even remember. Can you describe them? Uh, they were very orange. But they had like some sort of nut, and they had some sort of syrup. Was it like a, <coughs> like in a pan? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, like a baking pan. Okay. Uh, and I remember being skeptical, but I had them, and they were flipping fantastic. Yeah. Are you a fan of sweet potato no. slash yams? No. <laughs> uh, okay. Me, yeah. I love sweet potato. I love sweet uh, potato fries. Uh, you throw a sweet potato in the microwave yeah. and heat it up and then throw butter and whatever on it. Yeah. I love it. You so haven't good. Do, you haven't done that he, I, recently. I, I haven't done it. I've known you. <laughs> I, did, I feel like I've, I did it maybe when we were dating, but mm. maybe you weren't around mm. at the time. Yeah. Yeah. I love sweet potatoes. I've had sweet potato so. fries and when I get sweet potato fries, I'm like, why are these sweet? Like I want, <laughs> I want the potato, the starch, mm. the savory. Um, but uh, Drusella Hawkins, honey, she had a boyfriend named Felix, and she got Felix a job at Pacific Bell. They were the kind of couple who fought all the time. They thrived off that <laughs> chaos. Oh <okay>. no, <laughs> chaotic. 
Like the Britney Spears <laughs> <laughs> reality show on UPN with Kevin Federline. Anyways, uh, but they would argue all the time. But they wouldn't bring it into Pacific Bell. Well, that's very professional of them. Right, but you sensed it. Oh, no. You knew that Felix and Drusella were not seeing eye to eye on whatever. Uh, and so uh, they they carried it into the workplace. Mm. But they kept they kept it quiet, which was even more maddening. Uh, but uh, she was uh, she was a big girl, and Felix he was tall. That's all I remember. He was a good looking guy. She was cute, uh, but um, yeah, that's what I remember about Drusella <laughs> Hawkins and her uh, housewarming for an apartment in Concord. I wonder if she'll be making those candy DMs tomorrow for Thanksgiving. For Felix. For Felix. She is, he, call... is Felix still around? <laughs> she used to call him Fee. That was his nickname. <laughs> Fee. He's a nice guy. Quiet. Drusella. But Drusella had like... Like she didn't put up with no mess. Mm. She had that kind of attitude. And uh, poor Fee had to deal with that for some reason. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so canned cranberry sauce, number nine. Number eight, sweet potato casserole with marshmallows. Uh, I think, well, if if I saw, okay, if I saw canned cranberry sauce, I would pass, hard pass, as the kids say on TikTok. Uh, sweet potato casserole, I would have to be prompted to kind of dive in there, cajoled, gently nudged. Mm, okay. um, but I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't gravitate towards it. You know, uh, number seven. Okay, this is this is gonna be this is gonna be hard, honey. Number seven is boxed stuffing. I love boxed stuffing. So, so stove top, if you will. I love it. I like it better than homemade stuffing. Really? Yes. Okay. Because homemade stuffing. You get the weirdest things in there. You get <laughs> yes. you get crunchy things, you yes. get chewy things, and you don't know is this a vegetable? Is this some sort of animal? Yeah. Like what's been thrown oh, in this mix? I, I have see what no you're idea. Saying. Right. But, but stove topping is Oh yeah. It's gotta sit on the shelf for eight years, so there's no, there's <laughs> there ain't gonna be celery up in there. You know what you're getting. If, right. Unless people do the box stuff and then add in their own mixture oh, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if it's just the straight box stuffing, <clears> it's <throat> so yummy. It is. And it's very consistent. Yeah. I really like it. Yeah. I've heard stovetop uh, stuffing, dressing, as some call it, uh, described as wet bread, which uh, is true. I'm here for wet bread. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> Should we go dump our uh, our loaf of bread, not including the heel slice, which you don't eat, honey? Oh wait, you do eat it sometimes. Uh, should, w- would you dump that? <laughs> I guess if you dumped it into a chicken broth and then threw it in the toaster oven for ninety minutes, it would come out to something. I don't know what you're talking about, but yeah, I'll eat it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you're right. Stovetop is a, is solid. But when people throw in like celery and uh, cer- a certain family member throws in gizzards, okay, liver, honey, I I I I can't get behind that. Mm. And then there's people out here who are like, oh, well, just throw gravy on it. It's like what the gravy? that is so good. Oh my gosh, it's good. But but it doesn't uh, take away from the fact that celery and gizzards are oh, disgusting. Oh, oh, you're talking about the homemade stuff. Yeah. Well, I'm just talking about stuffing, stuffing in general. Stuffing in general. Okay. Yeah. So how do you feel about the box stuffing? It's it's good. Okay. It's a good side. It's a decent side. <laughs> but too too often people throw celery and gizzards in there and then throw some gravy on there and you know they say oh it's good no no no. the gravy is good the gravy is good the 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 stuffing listen uh, yes it's like when panda express puts celery in their in their freaking chow mein it's oh, disgusting oh lord yeah. okay my stuffing i want zero texture yeah i want squishy soft, soft, soft bread. Yes. and then i want even more gravy on top to make it even more soft and squishy okay mm-hmm. yeah Agree. And that oop. What happened? A girl I requested to follow on Instagram like a year ago accepted my follow request. Wonderful. So excited. Breaking news. And that oop. 
Uh, number six on nine foods that should be banned from the Thanksgiving dinner table, holiday dinner table, Christmas dinner table. Uh, number six, and this coincides with uh, the stuffing, uh, what, it, what I talked about in stuffing, but number six, turkey organs. What? The gizzards, the livers. It's just, that stuff is just nasty. I think I've been very lucky to have never had anyone in my life who prepared this for me. Yeah. Or if they have, I didn't eat it. I wasn't forced to eat it. Ugh. So, yeah, definitely. Get the, rid of that. Why is that even there? The gizzards are hard to chew. Uh, and then the liver is just too easy to chew. <laughs> oh, they're both nasty. Uh, I can't believe that's like so low on the list. That's got to be number nine. Yeah. Number five is uh, should be banned from Thanksgiving dinner. This hits close to home, honey. Number five is turkey. What? Agree. Turkey is what it's all about. Whatever. Maybe for... Wait, for, you uh, want to get rid of it? The aesthetic for, 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 the, for your picture on Instagram, honey. Uh, but... In the end, ham, You're greater ha- sign mean- <laughs> over turkey. <laughs> okay, I know you prefer ham. You because love it. it's better? You love ham. Yeah. But does that mean that turkey has to go? No, but like, so several years ago, Grandma Tian, uh, because I'm her darling son, would always cook turkey, but then I'd be like, I want ham. And she would make. I want ham. She would make a giant ham with cloves and all that Turn stuff. Her spoiled little boy. Yes, uh, and it was primarily for me. Although Grandpa Curtis likes some ham, uh, but I can I can dig turkey, the dark meat. I'll take a chunk of that. Uh, I'll have it. But again, you throw gravy on it. Gravy is the star, really, of Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> but I, th- I would throw gravy on some. Uh, a dry white meat turkey. I'd be like, okay, it's fine, but I would go back to ham, ham all day. Well, you know what? Gravy is like the deep fryer. Yeah. In that, it, anything you deep fry is gonna be good. Yes. Anything you throw gravy on is right. gonna be good. Okay. Right. Might as well just eat the gravy. <laughs> but I, I, I personally really like turkey. I really, really like it. Dark meat. I uh, love dark, dark meat. meat. Dark meat. I love meat. dark. I, I prefer dark meat. Yeah. Because it's good? It's juicy. It's juicy. I'll take the white meat, though. I mean, I'll take either. As long as it's cooked and prepared well, it mm. should be good. But you know what? Everyone has different taste buds. What? Everyone has different preferences. What? So whoever, if you don't like turkey, that's fine. I support you. But let's not this, cancel it entirely. This is a safe space. What did Le- Lennox liked Cheetos and then he didn't like Cheetos? And his explanation was that my taste buds are maturing, Mom. Well, he this is very. I forget where that originated from. Yeah, something many years ago. Yeah, his answer for why he suddenly didn't like something was my taste buds have changed. Uh, with turkey, I would say, okay, so the the classic turkey versus ham debate. There's no debate. Ham wins. Uh, but p- people out here is, are saying, well, you can make a turkey sandwich. Well, you can make a turkey sandwich any day of the week. But with ham. You'll have leftover ham. You got ham and eggs for breakfast. You got ham sandwiches, which are clearly better than turkey sandwiches. Ham leftovers. So ham ham over turkey. You are so biased. I am. I think both ham and turkey have equal leftover value. Well, ham tastes better. (laughs) (laughs) Turkey, much much, like how turkey needs gravy... Turkey needs a mayonnaise. <laughs> okay. Okay. What's next? Tur- What's next is that ham is <laughs> superior to turkey. And thank goodness Grandma Tian. <laughs> and that oop. Yeah. Well, Grandma Tian appeased me with the ham. And we currently have a ham in our refrigerator, which you're going to cook for us. Not the day of Thanksgiving because we're going to uh, stuff ourselves at uh, Uncle Brent's. But are we doing that day after? Although we're um, going to have Luna's no, friends no, no. here. I think I'll do it Saturday or Sunday for us. Okay. But you're very lucky this year. My brother and his wife are preparing both ham and turkey. Uh, so you don't have to cry and whine. <laughs> they are simpatico in my beliefs. And ham is clearly better than turkey. Um, 
Uh, number four on nine foods that should be banned from the Thanksgiving dinner table: mashed potatoes. What? I know. What? I know. But there are degrees of mashed potatoes, honey. Uh, some uh, I've in my history of living, <laughs> I've been to dinners uh, where mashed potatoes aren't grinded enough, like they're not whipped enough, and they're so there so there's large chunks of potato uh, in. The mashed potatoes, and it's, it's not a pleasant experience. Some people like it chunky. Really? Yeah. You like it smooth and creamy. I would say most people like it smooth and creamy. I have no idea. But you know what? Yeah. I feel like the number one Thanksgiving, like before I got rid of anything, I would get rid of the turkey mm-hmm. before I got rid of the mashed potatoes and gravy. Agree. I feel like mashed potatoes and gravy, yeah. you, you got to have it. Yeah. Everything else can go. Yeah. But that, those are the things you need. Well, you know what? When uh, the person making mashed potatoes doesn't grind them, doesn't beat them enough, and there's chunks of raw, chunks of raw potato in your raw. mashed potatoes, you know what you do? <laughs> Throw some gravy on there. Once again, gravy <laughs> is a star. Uh, number three, uh, green bean casserole. Yeah. Uh, yes, unless I'm the one preparing it. Yeah. Well, green bean... It's a terrible vegetable. You hate green beans. I love because they're disgusting. <laughs> I love green beans. Uh, and you know what? The green bean casserole. I've had it where it's been horrible. Yeah. But when I make it, I yeah. throw some chicken in there. I throw some cheese in there. Yeah. I don't use cream of mushroom soup. I use cream of chicken soup. Uh, and I put like double the fried onions that it yeah. requires. You know what? It's so good. It's good, uh, but. Green bean is a terrible vegetable no. because you have you have you have the outer shell, and then you got to break through that, and then the then there's the actual green beans inside. It's it's just it's it's a lot to get through. It's a lot of dealing with, as opposed to a corn. You bite into a corn, the corn <laughs> stuffs in the. It, it, the the corn goo sprays everywhere and it, it's it's a fun time but i feel with the green bean you got to work away from the shell and then get to the green bean and there's not much payoff there i would equate it to uh artichokes which i also find uh disgusting there's just a lot of chewing uh that you're dealing with shell 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 i think you have not had green beans prepared properly for you they my, my my problem is with the, the green bean itself. Have you had them soaked in hot butter? No. Because everything's good soaked in hot butter. Okay, no. there you go. But you know what? A few weeks ago, you made green beans <laughs> for the wow chows. <laughs> and I was like... It was a failure. This is going to be... Spoiler, it was a failure. This is going to be quite the deal. Uh, but then I was like, honey... Because I don't like green beans. I said, honey, uh, are, are you sure the kid you're going to give the kids green beans? And you said, I put a bunch of butter on them. And I was like, okay. And again, the problem with green beans is the green bean itself. But uh, you gave them to the Wow Chows and they were not fans. Nope. Uh, I think I ended up eating them myself. Yeah. So... The green bean. But your casserole is good. Uh, last year, I had it, and I was like, this is a lot it, a lot of cheese. I went way heavy-handed on the it's cheese. It's very rich. It's very thick. It doesn't have to be. I know. But you're going to... You're you're scaling down the cheese, or you're doubling up on the, on the... I'm scaling down on the cheese. Okay. Okay. I look forward to it, honey. I will, I will have a spoonful or two. Uh, number two uh, should be canceled. Cancel culture, uh, jello salad slash fruit cake. Well, okay. Those yeah. are two different things. Those are two completely different desserts. Really? Yes. Because I saw the jello salad and I was like, I don't know what that is. So I <laughs> threw fruit cake because they look very similar. <laughs> did you? Okay, fruit cake is way different. Um, They're both disgusting. <laughs> did you know it's so funny? Yeah. The only person I know who likes fruit cake is my uncle Paul. Ah. And so my mom. Sometimes in the holiday season, my mom will make a fruitcake specifically for Uncle Paul because okay. he likes it. But I have, I've never met anybody else who likes fruitcake. But yeah. Jello salad is different. That's okay. like when you make a Jello and you put fruit. You put like grapes in there. Well, okay, I've made it before. Yeah. 
And I have bought the cans of fruit cocktail. <coughs> Have uh-huh. you seen a can of yeah, fruit yeah. cocktail? Yeah, that's, yeah, I've had that. It's like cherry. What else is in there? Grapes, pineapples. Yeah. So uh, y- you do a ch- you do a Jello, and then you put the the fruit cocktail can in there. Yeah. I've put some whipped cream in there. Yeah. And then I've let it set, and yeah. it's actually been quite good. It's okay, but then you you're dealing with uh, the the canned um, fruit thing, like. Uh, the, the the canned cranberry, the, uh, I, I, the peach pie with with canned peaches. Why in are there. you anti canned fruits? <laughs> because they're disgusting. <laughs> Our fruit should be live, honey. It should be living. But okay, so well, Jello salad. This is the picture that came up, and it looks like there's meat in there, right? <laughs> oh and the corn. Gosh. That's disgusting. This is like something from Britain. 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 You know what? There's is another. A, is this a savory <laughs> jello salad? There's two types of jello salad. There's okay. the fruity one, which mm-hmm. I described, which yes. is yummy. Yeah. There's a more savory one, which is obviously horrible. Yeah. The more common one that I know of here in America is like one with like shredded carrots in it. What? I know. It's so bad. Nasty. But that picture you showed me looks yeah. like something out of England. Yeah. It's gross. It's like that had like meat chunks and cilantro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was Nasty. terrible. Like and so like uh, the Jello with uh, canned fruit, canned grapes in there. Um, it's fine, but I, I if I saw it at at uh, Brent Fisher's house tomorrow, I would I'd, I'd be like soft pass. <laughs> I, I'm not I'm not feeling that. Um, but do do you like Jello salad? I like the sweet Jello salads. Yeah, it's so like with 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 canned fruit in there. Canned fruit, yeah. Mm. I've made it. I like it. Especially throw some whipped cream in there, so it's a bit creamier. Yeah, really good. Oh, if you don't had, give me anything with a vegetable in it, though. If you had Jello salad versus uh, like apple pie, <laughs> apple pie. Come on, come on, come on. Right. I'm not that nuts. Jello salad versus. Uh, any dessert on the planet? No, obviously. But I'll eat it if it's the only thing in front of me. I won't eat it if the if it's I will starve. <laughs> then rather than eat Jello salad and the number one uh, food that should be banned from the Thanksgiving slash Christmas slash holiday dinner table is deviled eggs. <gasps> what? Yeah. Do you like deviled eggs? Heck no. <gasps> That's another thing I, I I can't even stomach. Oh my god, I love those. Those are so... I could eat a dozen. So this is when they take the yolk out and then mix it with some mayonnaise. Yeah, and then some mayonnaise, and some cayenne, s- some pepper salt, And et then you put it into a pastry uh, squirter uh, yeah. bag and you... <laughs> and then you... I oh my a, gosh. I always found that odd. It's so good. Like when... Like uh, potatoes... Uh, what, what are the potatoes they have at TGIFs? Oh, like the baked ones with like bacon in them. Well, well, oh, they, the, the skins. Yeah. So, so they 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 scoop out all the meat of the potato. Mm-hmm. They mix it up in a bowl and then they <laughs> right back into the skin. Yeah, there's the skins and that, then there's like twice baked potatoes. I always find that just <gasps> odd and that yeah. is so delicious. Eh. But you like deviled eggs? I love them. Mm. I can't believe you don't like them. Mayonnaise is involved, right? Yeah, you put mayonnaise on your ham sandwiches. That's true, but plain mayonnaise. Yeah, disgusting. But may- mayonnaise and eggs do not go together. Mayonnaise Although- and anything together goes better than plain mayonnaise on a sandwich. The other day for your lunch, you made an egg salad. Is that what yeah, you made? Yeah, I made egg salad. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that. Oh, it's so good. Eggs and mayonnaise don't put... And and another thing, potato salad is disgusting. (gasps) It's so good. Potatoes and mayonnaise do not go together. This is so interesting because, okay, I'm finding that you only like mayonnaise plain. Well, plain on a sandwich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, There's ham. There might be a little mustard. I cannot stand that. But Uh, all these other dishes we've mentioned with mayonnaise being a main component. Yeah. I love them. Huh. That's a very interesting dichotomy. Yeah. Is that the word? Yes. <laughs> Our taste buds are changing, Mom. Our taste buds are different. All righty. Are we done, honey? Yeah. 
Okay. Enjoy well, your Thanksgiving, everybody. Yes. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Christmas. Eat whatever your taste buds want. Yes. Do whatever you want. Do what makes you feel good, man. Well, that's the end of the program. It's been fun, but not really. Let's all try a little harder next time. Like, comment, subscribe, follow, review, and rate. Or don't. Do whatever you want. You're a grown-up. Make your own decisions. Do what's best for your family. Please be sure to use our promo code for ButcherBox. We don't have a promo code for ButcherBox. Reading is hard right now. (laughs) Goodbye. I love you. We love you. We hope you have a good day today and tomorrow. And sure, I may have said Drusella Hawkins was a big girl, but I'm still a good person and we're still good people. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your time. I hope you have a wonderful day slash night. A ball bye and happy Thanksgiving. And a oop. Oop. We got chicken. Is that crispy juicy tender?